Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Parks and Tech. My name's Josh. I like beer and whiskey. I review things, a lot of things, and this is just another segment of something. If you like things as much as I do, be sure to hit that like button, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you won't miss a day when I post a new video. Today, we are taking a look at another trail camera from a company called iZeeker. A special thank you to iZeeker for sending this out for my unbiased review. The IG400 trail camera captures video at up to 4K, 30 frames per second, and images at up to 48 megapixels. It has a 0.1 second trigger speed, comes with a full-size SD card, and even four batteries to get you started. More on that later. It does not offer Wi-Fi, so any photos and videos captured will need to be viewed on the LCD screen inside the camera or retrieved from the SD card. At the time of making this video, this camera is currently $69.99 US on Amazon. However, there is a $15 off coupon making this camera roughly $55 US. Be sure to check the links in the description for current pricing and availability. Let's see what this camera can do. Let's take a quick look at the packaging. On the front, we have the camera itself. On the side, we have some specs. Illuminated inside buttons. It has an IP66 waterproof rating. The camera and the screen are on the same side. And 4K 30 frames per second video resolution. On the back, we have some of the company information. Nothing on this side. Nothing on the top or bottom of the box. And that brings us back to the front. This is everything included in the box. A mounting strap. Mini USB cable for data transfer. Four AA batteries. A user manual in a few different languages. And finally, the camera itself. Let's take a look at the camera. Here we have our lens and some indicator lights. These are the No Glow IR LEDs. This is the main motion sensor. On the bottom, we have a quarter 20 tripod mount. A six volt connection port so you can power this via solar panel if you wish. You will just need to use rechargeable batteries. On this side are the hinges for the front cover to open and a battery door lock. On the back, there are a few slots where the strap goes for mounting and a product information label. On this side are the clasps that allow you to open and close the camera. Nothing on the top. And that brings us back to the front. To open the camera, unlock these two clasps. Here are the control and navigational buttons. On and off switch. Notice there is no test. More on that later. Be sure to remove any films from the sensor. A built-in speaker. On the bottom, we have a mini USB port and the six volt connector. On the side is where the full size SD card goes, which surprisingly enough is included. Put the SD card back in face up. Push until you hear the click. To access the battery tray, release this clasp and open the door. It will work with just the four included batteries, but I would highly recommend using all eight AA batteries for operation. You will need to supply the other four. Once you've inserted your batteries, be sure to close the door and relock the clasp. To 
To set up the camera, slide this button to on. You will need to use the up and down buttons to navigate and the OK button to select. These are all the languages you can choose from. Here, you will need to set your current date and time. Here, you can format the SD card. I would highly recommend doing this before first use, even if the SD card is brand new. Tap the menu button to access the main menu. The monitor delay is the amount of time the camera is idle before starting the main camera functions. Basically, because this camera doesn't have a test mode, this is how it will kick on after the designated idle period. Here you can change the mode. I prefer photo and video mode myself. Here you can change the resolution of the photos. These are all the resolutions you can pick from. I'm going to go with the max of 48 megapixels for this review. Here you can adjust how many photos are taken when triggered. I like the max of 3. Here you can change the video resolution. I will keep mine on the max of 4K, 30 frames per second, for this review. Video length is how long the video will record for when triggered. The longer the video, the more space it will use on your SD card. I like 20 seconds as a good default. Turning this setting on will allow the camera to overwrite older files on the SD card should it become full. I like this setting to be off personally. The PIR interval is the amount of time that the camera waits before triggering another round of photos and videos. The lower the number, the faster it reloads. Keep in mind that the lower numbers also use more battery power. For this review, I will keep it on the default of 5 seconds. Here you can change the PIR sensitivity. I like to keep mine on normal. Here you can change the IR brightness setting. I think they meant economy instead of economics, but the economy mode will save the most battery. The highlight setting will be the brightest, and the normal is the normal brightness setting. I will keep mine on normal for this review. You can set a specified time of day recording time, if you wish. You can record a time lapse. These are the same languages as in the beginning. Here you can manipulate the date and time if you need to. Hit the mode button to go back. Here you can access the camera's serial number. Here you can toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Here you can toggle the beep noise in the menu on or off. I really like the setting off. You can turn the audio recording on or off. Here you can adjust what gets displayed on the photos and videos. You can set a password for accessing the camera if you want. You can reset all the settings to default if you need to. Here you can check the firmware version and do a firmware upgrade. Hit the menu button to go back. And that's all the settings. Tap the menu button to go back. Tapping the mode button from the main screen will allow you to switch between modes. Tapping once will take you to photo mode, tapping again will take you to video mode, and tapping again will take you to the files stored on the SD card. The up and down arrows don't do anything while on the main screen. Hitting the OK button while on the main screen triggers the camera according to your mode. You can see it started the countdown to take the camera out of test mode and put into working mode. Pressing any button will stop the countdown.
Again, you can adjust the setting in the menu under Monitor Display. That's everything. Turn off the camera, close it up, and it's time to mount it. Once you have it mounted in its location, open the camera. I always like to double check my settings before letting it go. And here's the final countdown. Close it up and you're off and running.
trail camera from iZeeker is not bad at all for what it is. First off, it feels very well made and not cheap. It comes with everything you need. Just be sure to have 4 extra AA batteries. Again, I would highly recommend using all 8, but it will operate with just 4. It's very easy to set up and use. The LCD screen inside the camera is easy to see and the overall menu is laid out nicely, other than some minor typos. The image and video quality isn't terrible, but it's certainly not the best out there. I don't think it's true 4K videos or true 48 megapixel photos. With that said, for the sale price, it's not that bad. This camera has been out in the rain, wind, snow, and ice. It's still operating with no issues to report. I also can confirm that no moisture got inside. For the $55 sale price, they include some batteries and even the SD card. So really, while 4 batteries isn't ideal, they technically include everything you need with this package. The settings I used filled up the 32GB SD card pretty quickly. Once I noticed that, I switched to a 64GB SD card. It still filled up relatively quickly, but not as bad. Just something to note. All things considered, this isn't a bad trail camera by any means. It's very user friendly and straightforward in terms of operation. For the full price of $70 US, I don't think it's a very good deal. However, with the sale and the $15 off coupon taking it down to $55 US, yes, it's a pretty good deal. For that price, it's a wonderful beginner's trail camera or just something nice to have as extra. It's a nice upgrade from the IG200 I reviewed already for not much more money. While this is not true 4K, it's still nicer quality than the IG200. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you found any of this content useful, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you won't miss a day when I post a new video. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.